on three monitors. Looks like I need a bigger desk to come down. But the configuration here is 5x1 landscape. And in 5x1 landscape, we're looking at 10K by 1K resolution. 10K by 1K, that's 10 million pixels on the screen. That's 600 million pixels per second. That's awesome. And when you're playing this, you, you really get that sense of speed in your peripheral vision. It looks awesome. And I have Jason here, he's, he's uh, driving here. You can watch him for a while, see how good he is. Usually that's pretty good. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Running on top of AMD APU hardware, it's actually the tablet in market today, one from Acer and one from MSI. That's what I'm uh, showing here in my hand. And this is running that developer build. Key here is that what we actually did was took the developer build off the internet, loaded it onto this tablet, and that's what you're seeing today. We didn't have to go in and do any custom driver work. And that speaks to the long relationship we have with Microsoft in terms of doing uh, you know, deep engagement with future operating systems. And what you see here is the ability to leverage all the great graphics horsepower we have in this ACU that scales all the way up to the screen as well. So what we're seeing here is this Metro user interface. As Manju said, this is optimized for touch, so you can see it's very fast and responsive as I scroll around. I can pinch, zoom, and it allows you to do uh, very simple sort of content consumption type things. You want to check the stocks or check the weather. So here I can go and look at the weather, and what I see is not only the information for right now from Taipei, but in the background you see the clouds rolling by. So it tells me it's a nice day. If I look at Austin, Texas, where I'm from, you see it switch over now showing a nighttime scene because I should be sleeping right now. So it shows you the example, like the multimedia capabilities that are built into Windows 8, and things that run on top of Metro by default take advantage of all the graphics acceleration has whether it's fixed multimedia engines or whether it's VX11 graphics capabilities, those things will run as part of Metro. So talking about uh, VX11 and some lightweight gaming, here's an application that ships. And what you can see here is uh, it's just a simple touch-based game. And as I move this guy around, I get to the end, I have all sorts of uh, fun experiences on top of that. So it's gaming, it's information, it's watching your content, all of this in the, the Metro user interface. Another thing to point out, here's an application by one of our partners, uh, it's Finger Tap app, and uh, they'll be speaking later today. And as you can see, what they've done is they've extended even what Microsoft has done farther. So when I look at this game, what you can see is I start off with a puzzle, and this could be any picture that I have on my system. And as I go in and play it, and I have to put it back together, you can see that when I take my finger and press down, it actually reacts, it squishes, the lighting changes, and I move this around, it has 3D effects. So unlike you know, many tablets out there today or user environments, when you press down and do things, it's very static. I can see it moving, but I can't really feel it. But with this, again, as I move this around, there are so many other DX11 type of effects that these guys have implemented that really makes you feel like that touch experience is much more immersive. And then finally, uh, talking about not only what you can do in this Metro touch optimized user interface, as Manju said, there's a whole second part of the experience with Microsoft, which is your classic Windows desktop. So this is what the Windows desktop looks like. The first thing I'll show you is the task manager. As, Microsoft, as uh, Manju is pointing out, part of the reason that Microsoft is able to implement more aggressive power management is they take applications that you're not running and they suspend them in the background. So there's the game I was running, there's stocks. And now I go back here to my desktop environment and you'll see this game will now go into a suspend mode. So it shuts down all the processing power, but it does keep a memory footprint so I can go back quickly to it. So as you have many of these applications open, you're going to need a nice large addressable memory space and that's something that the AMD 64-bit uh, architecture will provide you. So as, as you know, there are you know, tens of millions of applications today that people continue to use on their desktop, whether it's something like uh, Visual Studio, so I actually develop applications and run them on the same hardware, or I'm doing word processing, um, PowerPoint, any of the applications out there today, 
you want those to run and run well in your classic Windows environment, which is part of Windows 8, you know, that x86 architecture and all the legacy that applies from a software perspective as well as the peripherals, that's going to be even your Windows 8 experience. So we're very excited by Windows 8. There's a lot of work we've done already that, again, if you go get this developer build and put it on your systems, you're going to see all that performance out of your graphics hardware now with the x86. And uh, we're looking forward to when that comes out. And if you're interested, again, in what some of the key software developers are doing, not only in Win7, but with Win8, I'll uh, reiterate what Monty said. Uh, please come and check out the software track this afternoon to see what some of these guys are doing.